Good day. Welcome to the fourth lecture of metal forming. In this lecture, I am going to explain about metal rolling process. So, as we know, the metal rolling process is a bulk deformation process. And in metal rolling process, that is a, one of the fundamental uh, metal forming process. And most of, most of the components in engineering applications are manufactured with a metal rolling process. And, and there are different examples like uh, beverage cans, uh, uh, different plates used uh, in uh, shipping industries or air, um, aircraft industries, etc. We use a uh, number of applications are there for this uh, rolling process. So, today in this lecture, uh, I am going to explain this rolling process. So, this is the content of this uh, lecture. Uh, we will discuss about the rolling and the principles of rolling and the type of rolling and the rolling mix. So, uh, these three portions uh, which I am going to cover in this lecture. So, this is already I explained in the last uh, lectures. Uh, this is the outcomes uh, that is derived from this module. So, this is also the introduction that is also I explained in the last lectures. Actually, the uh, metal forming is a one of the uh, primary shaping process after casting casting we got a ingot and uh, using that ingot we can deform the material by applying any of the metal forming process and uh, major metal forming process are rolling uh, extrusion forging bending drawing like uh, these are the sheet metal process where the metal is uh, deformed by plastic deformation and out of this we are going to study about this rolling process this is a fundamental metal forming process so, what is a rolling process? In a rolling process, uh, this is a forming process making use of suitable stresses like a compression, tension, shear and combined stresses to cause plastic deformation of the material to produce required shape. So, in the last lectures, we discussed about the importance of the plastic deformation in the metal forming. So, here also we apply the plastic deformation by means of application of different types of stresses. Okay, most commonly we apply uh, compressive force. Uh, other than that, we apply uh, tension, shear, combined stresses also applied for plastic deformation of the material. So, when we apply a stress on the material um, uh, which is equal to the flow stress of the material at a particular strain, then what happened? There will be a permanent or plastic deformation of the material and we uh, convert the raw material into a particular product. So, here this is the important things that is the plastic deformation. Plastic deformation of the raw material. Okay, plastic deformation of the raw material. So, uh, as we studied in the stress strain graph, we have to apply a stress for a, for example uh, for this much amount of strain we have to apply this much amount of stress and this stress is called flow stress of the material flow stress of the material this is the stress required for plastic deformation for the strain epsilon 1 so we have to apply uh, flow stress corresponding a particular strain for the plastic deformation and recrystallization we will uh, we can divide the rolling process into two the first one is the hot rolling process and second one is the cold rolling process in hot rolling process we heat the material above the recrystallization temperature above recrystallization temperature we studied the what is the recrystallization temperature in the metallurgy and material science class and the recrystallization is a process by which deformed grains are replaced by a new set of undeformed grains and that nucleate and grow until the original grains have been um, entirely consumed. So, there will be a transformation from uh, undeformed uh, deformed grains to undeformed grains during this uh, recrystallization. Uh, new set of undeformed grains are formed at the end of the uh, recrystallization. Uh, for re uh, recrystallization, we have to heat above the recrystallization temperature and uh, for steel it is around 600 degrees Celsius but we carried out the uh, plastic deformation uh, at a 900 or up to 110,100 degrees Celsius for uh, recrystallization of the steel material. So, we will study about that later. So, uh, this is the basic definition of the rolling process. The rolling process in metal working, rolling is the metal forming process in which metal stock is the ingot which is passed through one or more pairs of rollers to produce the thickness and to make use of the thickness uniform. So, here we can see in this animation, we can see we, here we have two rollers, one roller rotating in this direction and another roller rotating in this direction. Okay. So, when we pass this uh, stock material in between the rollers, what happened? So, initially the stock material has a particular depth or particular thickness that is H0. When it is passing through the pair of rollers, when it is passing through this pair of rollers, what happened? 
there will be a reduction in thickness. We can see a reduction in thickness and the final thickness is H1 such that H1 is less than H0. H1 is less than H0. So, there will be a reduction in thickness. So, here there is no material removal. The material is not removed from the uh, workpiece. So, uh, the full, full volume is conserved here. So, what happened? Here, uh, the material has a particular thickness. Here we can draw. So, it has a particular thickness. Uh, particular width, this is W. Okay. Here, during the rolling process, the change in width is very negligible. Very negligible because uh, there is a friction between the plate and the roller. So, this friction uh, does not allow the variation in the width direction. But, the majority of the um, change in thickness is reflected on the increase in length. So, when we reduce the thickness of the rolling material, okay, when we reduce the thickness of the rolling material or the work piece, what happened? The reduction in thickness actually increase the length of the final product. Okay, so here we can see, here we reduce the thickness from H1, H0 to H1, H0 to H1. Correspondingly, there will be an increase in length. So, initial work piece has a length of L0. It is increased to L1. So, thickness is reduced. To compensate the reduction in thickness, what happened? The length is increased. Then only we can maintain constant volume. Here, there is no change in uh, or there is no removal of material. So, the, we have to maintain uh, or the material volume is conserved here. So, whenever there is any reduction in thickness, that will reflect in the ingress in, increase in the length. Okay, so in rolling process, the reduction, uh, the change in width is negligibly small. And in rolling process, we can classify into two. That is, first one is the hot rolling process. Second one is the cold rolling process. So, uh, uh, in hot rolling process, we heat the material above recrystallization temperature. Okay, so new undeformed grains will be formed above the re uh, recrystallization temperature. So, in we in the hot rolling process, we heat the material above recrystallization temperature. That is called hot rolling. But in cold rolling, uh, majority of the cold rolling is, uh, is carried out uh, in room temperature. Okay, there is no heating of the raw material. So, we, he, uh, we only um, uh, deform the material in the room temperature. That type of rolling is called cold rolling process. So, this is the first classification, cold rolling and uh, hot rolling process. So, this is the video showing the uh, rolling process. Here, this is the rolling work piece. Process. See this? See the length of the workpiece. This much is the length of the workpiece. Okay. Length of the workpiece L0. This is the high um, thickness of the workpiece H0. And after rolling, so it is passing through the uh, rotating rollers. Here two rollers are rotating. We use the power from the prime mover for rotating these two rollers. And then the when it is, is passing through the rotating rollers and the gap between these two rollers, it will be less than the thickness of the workpiece. Okay. So, when it passes through the and rollers, what happens? There is a reduction in thickness. Opening of two At the same time, we can see the length is increased. Is length is increased from L0 to L1 and thickness is reduced from H0 to H1. This is H1. Okay. So, this is the rolling process. The two cylindrical so, this is the two cylinder, the front view of the two cylinders. This one is the front view of the two cylinders. And this two cylinder, this is the gap between the two cylinders. This is the gap. Okay, and these two cylinders are um, held on these two rolling, uh, sorry, uh, bearings. Okay, it is rotating um, inside a bearing and uh, this uh, connected to uh, the power transmission system. Supported on bearings and are driven by a powerful motor. So, see this powerful Open motor is connected the to the... can be adjusted as required. So, the this is the is gap between the two rollers. Gap or regulated opening. So in rolling process, this the gap is actually is the uh, thickness of the final product. Plastically. So, we the can plastically deform the material. Compressive forces and is deformed plastically. The cross section decreases in length gets elongated whereas the total so see this, remains. The final length, the length is elongated and the cross section is reduced or thickness is see. reduced. It is the main metal working process and offers itself to mass production. Close control of the final product is possible. Rotating rolls will squeeze the workpiece inducing direct compressive So, see this. What happened during this rolling process? We can see the um, force applied. So, actually during the rolling process, we apply the force in the downward direction uh, through the rollers. So, here actually we apply the we apply the force in this direction. Force in this direction. In the downward direction. And when it contact with the, the rollers are in contact with the workpiece, we can see some 
force application. So here this is the direction of force uh, from the rollers to the workpiece and the workpiece uh, there will be some reaction from the workpiece to the rollers. This is the reaction from the workpiece to rollers. Okay, and by the uh, here then we apply a stress greater than the um, or equal to the flow stress of the material at a particular strain, and there will be a plastic deformation of the material um, during this process. Fasten it. Friction dominates the process. So here there will be a friction. We can see a sliding between the roller and the roller and the workpiece. So this sliding actually create a friction. Okay, so the friction force uh, play an important role in the uh, rolling process. We will study in detail about the friction um, between the rollers and the workpiece later. Rolling of workpiece can be carried out in hot or cold condition. So we can do the um, rolling process in different conditions. And these are the different products we can develop by rolling process. The rolling process is not uh, only for the um, producing flat surface or plates like a surface. Okay, we can create different cross section using rolling process. See this, we can create a plate like a, a material, uh, final products using a rolling process. And this is is a plate and this is a uh, slab type materials and we can make uh, this type of uh, cylindrical bar products also using a rolling process and this type of i section can be structure members also can be developed using rolling process and this type of l shaped structure member c shaped structure members also can be made using rolling process so it's not only for the making this type of flat surface we can make any um, complex uh, cross sectional members using rolling process Components produced through rolling have higher mechanical properties than cast products. So the main advantage of the rolling process is that uh, the mechanical property, the mechanical property of the property of the rolled products is higher than that, that of the casting product. We can make the same product. See this, this product can be made using casting process. We can prepare a mold and we can pour the molten material and through that and then we can make this uh, eye cross session, eye, eye structure using uh, casting process. But compared to the casting product, um, uh, casting process product, this rolled product has a good mechanical property. What is the reason for this mechanical property? When we do a uh, deformation process, plastic, uh, plastic deformation process, there will be some residual stress, compressive residual stress on the material and uh, also uh, the strain hardening effect also increases the strength of the material. So this compressive residual stress help in different applications area like uh, the material subjected to fatigue load. Okay, and this um, strain hardening increase the strength as well as the hardness of the material. Okay, so this mechanical property improvement helps for the um, better life of the product during its application compared to the cast products. Okay, so that is a, one of the main advantage of the uh, rolled products compared to cast product, even uh, compared to machined products also. But in the rolling process, uh, the main difference uh, between rolling and uh, machining. In case of machining, we uh, we got uh, good surface finish and accuracy, dimension accuracy compared to the rolled product. Uh, but uh, we can make uh, product with a good surface finish and accuracy by rolling process also by some means of controlled rolling process. We will explain about that later. Slabs, sheets, bars, rods, structural components like I, U, and L sections, etc. in long lengths yeah, can be these produced. These are the different types of components made. Rolling process. So this is the uh, two types of first classification, hot rolling and cold rolling. In case of hot rolling, we hot use the, rolling. Uh, Let us see an example for material. hot rolling process. So this is the rollers. hot rolling process. These are the billet. two rollers. These are the billet or ingot, which is in hot condition, above recrystallization temperature. Hot rolling. Rolling is a process of compressing the metal between two opposite rotating rollers for reducing its thickness. So this is the hot rolling is a process of compressing the material between two opposite rotating rollers. The, for the forward motion of the uh, material, we need uh, opposite rotation of the workpiece. Then only um, we can rot um, move the material forward direction and thereby we can reduce the thickness of the material. That is uh, here the workpiece in the hot condition. That is hot rolling. Grain flow in so hot rolling. Grain flow in the hot rolling in process. previous video, we have seen hot rolling. Let us see the grain process. Rolls. So these are the rolls. See, see this. This is the undeformed uh, uh, grain structure. Undeformed grain structure. For the ingot or billets, we have undeformed grain structure, which is in the hot condition. Okay, in the hot rolling process. From grain structure. So when, when it, grain. see this. When it passes through the rollers, in between the rollers, this undeformed, it is almost equiaxed. Equiaxed means from the center for, for the, to the surface of the grains, almost equal radius we can see. So when it passes 
through the rollers what happened the sequenced material changes to coarse grained material this is the sorry elongated grained material this is the elongated grains so this is sequenced this one is the elongated grains so when in, when the material passed through the rollers this sequenced undeformed grain material converted to elongated or long grained material grains grains are elongated in the direction of rolling and the recrystallization so, process takes place after this so after uh, coming uh, after coming out from the rolling process we can see this deformed material in this length area deformed grains cold rolling so this is the, um, let us see an actually here the elongated grains finally converted to very fine grains fine grains it is converted to very fine grains at the end of the rolling process next one is the cold rolling process in cold rolling process let us see an example of cold rolling to very it high consists temperature. of two rolls called okay. backup roll and work and for hot uh, cold rolling process the main uh, difference is that in hot rolling we heat the material to very high temperature so we need only very less force for deformation because we know when we heat a material we can easily deform that material so the force requirement for the deformation of the hot material is very less compared to the cold rolled material okay so here in the cold rolling process we need to apply very high amount of load so that we need to provide some backup rollers for cold rolling process here for supporting these rollers here we can see this is the rollers for rolling process and to support this rollers otherwise if we are not providing any backup roller uh, the initially this is the front view of the roller but after rolling process there may be a chance of this type of deformation of the roller okay camber it is called cambering of the roller to avoid this cambering of the roller we provide some backup roller in cold rolling process king roll plate so in here, cold, in cold rolling, rolling the, the pellet is deformed in between, between the, the two working rollers so here we can see the a reduction backup roller avoids the yeah, bending avoid of the working bending rolls. of the working rollers backup rollers Okay, this is the um, grain flow rolling in cold rolling. Let us see grain flow in cold rolling. So we can see the grain Rose. flow in cold rolling process. These are the rollers. And so this is the grain structure. Uh, if you ask the grain structure, after the rolling process, elongated you can grains. See elongated grains similar to the previous case. Grains are elongated in the direction of rolling. So here we can see elongated grains in the direction of rolling. So that is the difference between hot rolling and cold rolling. And uh, next we will see a actual rolling process. These are the two rollers. This is the side view of the two rollers. Okay, we can see. We Industry see all over the world with custom made rolling oils. This animation shows the important role of lubrication in the steel cold rolling process. In the cold rolling process, steel strip is passed through sets of work rolls okay, at high speeds. Under the high loads, the, high the, loss, the strip thickness is progressively reduced. For the higher reduction in thickness, we use uh, a series of rollers. So here the first set of rollers, second set of rollers, this is the third set of rollers. And we use a series of rollers, which is called a tandem milling. Tandem milling. So by using this set of rollers, we got very high reduction at the end of the process. Okay. So by single, by sing, uh, using single set of rollers, we cannot... Uh, deform the material um, uh, beyond a particular limit okay we have a particular depth for deformation so if you need a very high reduction we use a set of rollers such type of deformation is called a tandem milling it passes in a reverse process. process or in several successive yes. stands in a tandem mill 60 degree Fahrenheit this is the tandem this mill. is accelerated and we provide some lubrication reduction. in this area this creates history all over the world with custom made so next year we will discuss the principle of metal rolling process and here we can see these are the two rollers rotating in opposite direction okay oh, oh, sorry okay rotating in opposite direction and this is the initial uh, billet with the h0 and this is the final billet with the h1 uh, thickness okay this is the direction of feeding and here in this master metal uh, rolling operations are similar in that of work material is plastically deformed by the compressive force here dominating force is the compressive force which is applied through these spinning rollers so here we apply the compressive force through the rollers okay and the force act to reduce the thickness of the metal and affects its grain structure we already uh, seen how it affects the grain structure and um, here the major change is in the thickness and the length 
and the reduction in thickness can be measured by the difference in thickness before and after the reduction this value is called a draft so how much is uh, how much amount of thickness is varied that means s1 my s0 minus s1 that is called a draft of the rolling process okay that is actually the gap between the two rollers so these are the uh, figures of different rolling process this is the hot work piece this one is a hot work piece uh, used using for rolling process and for the rolling process we use different types of uh, work piece material okay most of the work piece semi finished products are used for rolling process and this semi finished products are mainly produced by casting process we already discussed that uh, by means of continuous casting we can make a different semi finished products and this uh, semi finished products are uh, used for different metal forming operations and what are the different semi finished products we can classify the semi finished products based on the cross section area of the uh, product so uh, these are called uh, blooms billet slabs etc and in case of blooms uh, what is the main difference the ingot is it has a cross section greater than that that of the 230 cm square it has a cross section of and this is the this cross section will have greater than 230 cm square so such a product is called bloom uh, or semi finished product is called bloom and second one it has a cross section of uh, greater than uh, 40 into 40 mm square and that is also used for uh, hot rolling process that is called billet and third one is the uh, slab it has a um, two cross section um, that means width and uh, thickness and the cross section area should be greater than 20 cm square and width is great two times greater than, than that of the thickness so the the thickness and the width is not same the uh, width is greater than two times of the thickness so, so these are the three major uh, semi finished products used for this uh, hot rolling or uh, sorry cause hot or cold rolling process and by rolling process so this semi finished products are um, passed through this rollers in between the rollers and we make different types of products by the rolling process major products made by the rolling process is first one is the plate plate is commonly uh, developed by this rolling process and it has a, the major characteristics of the plate is it has a thickness greater than 6 mm thickness is greater than 6 mm that is the main important uh, characteristics of the plate and plates commonly used uh, for making uh, the hulls of the ship uh, and uh, for making the um, walls of the reactor uh, so such type of fabrication we commonly use plates okay it has a very high thickness compared to sheet and a stripper and in case of sheet sheet it has a thickness less than 6 mm and the width is commonly greater than 600 mm then we can say such type of materials or products as sheet this is the sheet material okay so compared to plate it has a very low thickness and the, uh, the difference between sheet and strip is that um, the thickness is less than 6 mm but the width if it is greater than 600 mm then we can call this as a strip okay so plate sheet strips are the different products coming Uh, from the rolling process see this using this blue billet slab these are the actually these three blue uh, sorry plate sheet strip are actually a flat products the surface will be a flat other than this flat products we can make different cross section also by using rolling process see this using blooms we can create different types of structure components this is an i session i session uh, for different applications we can uh, develop from this blue by rolling process and using the slab we can make a plates and sheet we already discussed what is plate and what is sheet and also we can make some such type of coiled sheets also uh, using slab by converting by reduction reducing the thickness into very low value less than 6 mm if it is uh, sheet greater than 6 mm it is plate using billets we can make a bars and a rods etc so varieties of products can be made using rolling process see different um, components made using rolling process using slab this is a slab uh, this is the uh, semi finished product um, commonly made using casting process and by applying different rolling process we can make different varieties of products see this uh, using this roll uh, rolling process we can make this is uh, here uh, in this hot rolling uh, hot strip you um, using this we can uh, create uh, sheets very called uh, sorry strips are um, developed using this uh, after first we do hot rolling process then we pickling and oiling for the um, for case hardening and uh, for the material property change then we do called rolling and then uh, finally we got a strip and we can make uh, welded piles also using rolling process see this first we make uh, um, some um, sheet or strip 
by rolling process then we use this type of rollage this is also a rollage using when it pass through this rollage we can make a welded pipes also using rolling process and uh, first we convert the slab into plate using rolling process then we uh, this is the steel plates we can be used for different applications so these are the different products strips uh, pipes uh, plates etc we can make using this slab material next one is the billet material this is the billet material and using billet material we can make different products like a bar material see this this is the bar material called drawn bar material first we convert into hot rolled bars then we reduce the thickness um, by passing through a die then we can make a different wires also see this first we make a rod so here we can see some groove between the rollers so uh, this is a this we see this in this we can see a groove in between the rollers when the billet pass through this grooves we can reduce the or we can change the cross section okay so this is the hall roll the bar then again by doing different types of drawing operation uh, what is drawing we pull the material bar material through a very small die so when we pull see this here uh, here we have a very small opening here when we pull the rod this rod through this opening we can reduce the cross section to very large extent thereby we can make a uh, wire products etc okay uh, that is also another product from the rolling process we can make a tube also okay pipes or tubes with the hollow structures now for that we first we um, tube rounds are made then uh, seamless pipes are um, produced by management process we will discuss about that process this is also a rolled product a seamless pipes also we can make using rolling process and using bloom semi finished product we can make this type of structural components and rails etc so see this the rollers are arranged in different manner uh, so when the bloom material is passing through this roller in through the roller we can make this type of cross section according to the required cross section we can arrange the rollers and we can make any cross section using this um, rolling process so the variety not only the flat surface or flat cross section we can make any variety cross section using this uh, rolling process that is the advantage of the rolling process so uh, rolling process can be defined as it's a bulk deformation process last class we uh, distinguished bulk deformation and a uh, sheet metal process so this is a bulk deformation process that reduces the thickness or changing the cross section of the long workpiece by compressive force here we apply the main uh, force which is applied through the roller is a compressive force uh, that is applied through the set of rollers so this is the rollers roller one and roller two when the piece of metal is rolled in between two rollers the thickness is reduced as a result of compressive stresses excited by the rollers and it can be treated as a two-dimensional deformation this is a two-dimensional deformation uh, for example uh, consider a plate okay so this is the uh, rolling process here here we can see the thickness see this here we can see the thickness this is s0 after rolling when it come out from the roller its thickness is reduced to s1 okay and initial workpiece has a length l1 and it is increased the reduction in thickness is compensated with the increase in length okay so the length is increased from l l0 to l1 but here we can see the width here the w is the width here also width is not changed here also w is the width there is no change in the width width direction so we can say this is a two dimensional process this is a two dimensional deformation in thickness and length direction thickness is reduced during rolling process and length is increased neglect in the the deformation in the width direction there will be some negligible deformation in the width direction but we not we are not considering the deformation in the width direction uh, for for studying this rolling process what is the reason for this uh, neglection of uh, neglecting the deformation in the width direction here we, we can see uh, during the deformation uh, the material has to flow from this point to this point for the deformation in the width direction okay in this direction in this lateral direction the material has to flow then only we can we got a deformation in the width direction 
But here we can see in this direction, the roll is actually arranged in the in this direction, with the direction. The most of the uh, material which resists the or most of the material of the roll is which are actually in the width direction. Okay. So this material, material of the roll is will uh, resist the deformation or metal flow in the width direction by means of friction. So, so that the width direction deformation will be very negligible compared to the reduction in thickness and the increase in the length. So, this is due to the fact that the length of contact, the contact between the uh, rollers and the workpiece in the width direction is very higher. So, this length of contact, uh, by means of this length of contact, there will be a huge friction between the workpiece and the uh, roller in the width direction. So, this friction will not allow a flow of material in the width direction. So, that there will not be any deformation or metal flow in the width direction. Okay. So, that is the reason for that. So, we can we are not considering any deformation in the width direction during rolling process. So, here we apply the compressive load uh, through the rollers for the deformation. We, we have to, we should apply a deformation uh, in the plastic region for permanent deformation. So, uh, we um, we can uh, decide the thickness between the rollers uh, before uh, how much amount of thickness is required for the final product. Uh, so, uh, corresponding to that, we can adjust the thickness between the rollers or gap between the two rollers. And this is the uh, metallurgy or the material structure, grain structure uh, before and after um, rolling process. The, this is the originally undeformed grains, which are almost um, equiaxial structure. And after rolling process, we can see elongated grains. Elongated grains uh, is produced after rolling process. And then finally, this elongated grains is converted into very fine grains. See this, this is very fine grains. That is the final product grain structure. It will be a fine grain structure. So that um, this fine grain structure will help to increase the strength of the material also. And here we can see, uh, what is the angle of contact here? Here, this is the point of entry of the material or the contact is start at this point A. And the contact is end at this point B. This is the point B where the contact between the roller and the workpiece is ending. And this is the region where actually the force is applied in this region. Okay. And this region ACB, this is uh, ACB that is a, it's an arc of contact. And this angle is called the angle of contact. This angle between A O B, that angle is called angle of contact. So, the, the, there is an importance for this angle of contact. And we will discuss about that in the next lectures. So, this is the area where contact between a workpiece and a um, roller is take place. Okay. And here there will be some friction because there is actually this is a sliding between this roller is and a, this roller is and a workpiece. Okay. There is a relative movement between this roller and the workpiece. So, this relative movement develop a friction between the roller and the workpiece. So, we have to apply some lubricants for this uh, reduction of friction, but we should not decrease the friction to zero value. There is a requirement of friction in between the roller and the workpiece. This friction helps to flow the uh, workpiece in the forward direction. So, we will discuss about that later. So, the friction is necessary one. So, necessary one, we should not uh, completely um, uh, um, remove the friction between the roller and the workpiece by applying lubricants. Uh, there should be a requirement of friction, but too much friction should be avoided by use of uh, this lubricants. Okay. So, too much friction will cause some defects in the material. So, we have to, uh, we should avoid this higher friction between the roller and the workpiece by using lubricants. So, here in this, the pressure exerted uh, by over the metal by rollers vary as represented by pressure distribution curve in the diagram. It will be maximum at both the extremes and will be, so it will be minimum at the both extremes and it is maximum at the somewhere of the curve and that curve, that point is called a neutral point and where the slip is zero and the pressure will be maximum. And here, so the pressure distribution at this point, at this point, the pressure will be very minimum. Okay, at the entry point. Here the pressure develop or act by uh, from the roller to the workpiece is very minimum. Here at the exit point also pressure is minimum. And so there will be a variation in the friction from this point to this point. Okay. So in these two extreme points, the friction is minimum, but somewhere along this arc of contact, at a point, that point is called no slip point, the friction will be maximum. And this point is called neutral point. Okay. At the neutral point, maximum pressure exerted by the roller on the workpiece. Maximum pressure. And one more important characteristic of the neutral point is that uh, the where the relative velocity, relative velocity will be zero. There should not be any relative velocity between the 
roller and the work piece in the neutral point. So that is the next point related to the neutral point. And, uh, mm, and that means there is no zero sliding, no zero slipping between the roller and the work piece. That point is called a neutral point in the uh, rolling process. We will uh, discuss about the neutral point uh, in detail in the next lecture. So this is the neutral point. This is the neutral point. And this is uh, here, this is the entry region. Up to neutral point, this is the entry region. From the neutral point to the uh, exit, this is the exit zone or exit extreme exit region. We will discuss about the velocity distribution, etc. in the next lecture. So this is a neutral point. At the neutral point, the friction is maximum. At the neutral point, there is no slip. There is no slip or no, no slide or there is no relative movement in the neutral point. So that is uh, keeping this in your mind. And this alpha, that is the angle of contact. That is the angle between the entry and the exit point of, uh, during the rolling process. And we can divide the rolling process into hot rolling and uh, cold rolling. I already explained that. And this is the microstructure during the hot rolling process. Uh, this um, coarse, coarse equiaxial grains of the ingot converted to these elongated grains after rolling. Then after some time um, for the hot rolling, after some time after cooling, this elongated grains converted to fine grained structures. Okay, and these are the fine uniform small grained structures. So, this fine grained structure will increase the uh, ductility as well as strength of the material. It will have higher strength and uh, ductility because of the uh, reduction in the grain size or fine grained material. Okay, that is the hot rolling process. The next one is the cold rolling process. In case of cold rolling process, we got elongated grains. Okay, so we uh, do cold rolling. Uh, at a room temperature, there is no heating of the material, raw material uh, in the cold rolling. And the main advantage of cold rolling process is that the strain hardening, strain hardening. Because in the hot rolling process, when we deform, uh, there is no such type of strain hardening effect. Maybe there is some negligible strain hardening, but the effect of strain hardening for the strength increase is very negligible. Okay. But in case of cold rolling, there is a huge strain hardening strength increase uh, for the final rolled product. Okay, what is the reason? When we do cold rolling, the workpiece in the cold condition. So the workpiece in this workpiece, there are lots of dendrite. Sorry, dislocations will be developed. Okay, and one dislocation affects the mobility of the other dislocation. Thereby, the strength of the material will improve in the deformed condition for the cold rolling process. But in case of hot rolling process. Of course, during the deformation, these dislocations will be developed, but under high temperature, these dislocations disappear. Okay, the huge number of dislocations developed during the deformation of the hot to work piece is disappear under high temperature. So, there is no such of uh, mobility restrictions by uh, one dislocation on another is developed in the hot rolling condition, thereby there is no strain hardening in the hot rolled material. But in case of cold rolled material, there will be a Increasing the strength because of strain hardening. Okay, so uh, in case of hot rolling, so the material is in the uh, um, um, cold rolling. The material is in the room temperature, so we have to apply very high amount of force in case of cold rolling process. Then only we can deform the material to very large depth. Okay, but in case of hot rolling, the material is in the hot condition. We can apply, uh, we can deform the material to a large extent by applying a small amount of force. Because the material is in the hot condition, we can easily deform the material. Okay, there is ductility and uh, the deformation nature is higher under uh, hot condition. So, the, we need um, a huge amount of force in case of cold rolling process. So, that the thickness of the work is uh, as much as hot, um, the cold rolling cannot reduce the thickness of the work is as much as hot rolling in single pass. That is one of the disadvantage of the cold rolling process. So, the productivity in case of cold rolling will be lower, but the strength improvement is very high. Okay. So, this is the difference between the hot rolling and the cold rolling. Uh, all the majority of the, so here we have uh, strain hardening or work hardening. There is no strain hardening here. Okay. The coefficient of friction lesser here. Here, the higher temperature leads to high friction. And here, we got heavy reduction in area. Because the material is in the hot condition, we can reduce to very large value. But excessive um, heavy reduction is not possible. Excessive cold reduction is leads to cracking. But here we can reduce to very lower value. Uh, roller diameter requirement is large. Here we need a smaller roller. Uh, I will explain that reason later. 
we can reduce into 0 0.002 mm small thickness uh, hot rolling we can reduce up to 1.525 mm it's not economical and here residual stress will be developed here residual stress because in cold condition uh, compressive residual stress will be developed um, what is in the room temperature so these residual stress will not relieve but in the hot rolling condition the even uh, some residual stress is developed under hot condition, this is relieved from the workpiece. So, there is no residual stress developed in the hot rolling process. Next, we will uh, we are going to study about the types of rollers under rolling mills. Different types of machines can be used for rolling operations. And wide variety of rolling equipments are available uh, with a number of rolling arrangements. According to the cross-section requirements, we can arrange the rollers in number of ways. And smaller diameter rollers are preferable because of the smaller radius, the lower the roll force. So, if you use a higher diameter roller and a smaller diameter roller for the same reduction. Okay, for the same reduction, the thickness is H0 here, here H0, after rolling H1, here also after rolling H1. Okay, so here the uh, diameter or radius is uh, R1 is greater than R2. Okay, in if you use a higher diameter roller, the force requirement for the same reduction F1 is higher than that of F2, which is the force requirement for uh, the rollers with a smaller diameter. Okay, so if you use a roller with a higher diameter, the force requirement for the same reduction is higher than, than that of the smaller diameter roller. So that is actually uh, one of the important um, design aspect during the rolling process we have to we should use a smaller diameter roller then only then only we can up, uh, do uh, rolling process with a low lower amount of force okay so that is important we will discuss the uh, reason for that uh, later during the analysis area keep this in mind uh, ro roller with a smaller diameter require only smaller amount of force for the same reduction compared to uh, larger diameter roller and in case of roller, this is the rolling machine and we need rollers, these are the rollers and we need bearings to support the rollers and then there is a housing for all the parts, then driver motor, motor for applying power to the rollers and controlling the speed. Modern rolling mills require very rigid construction and uh, large motors to supply enough power. Success stands for large continuous mills, uh, engineering design, construction, huge capital investment, etc. required for more, more modern rolling mills. And there are several types of rolling mills and equipments are available with the diverse rolling arrangements. Uh, although the equipments for hot and uh, cold rolling is essentially the same, there are important difference in rolling material, process parameters, lubricants and uh, cooling systems. And the design and construction operation of rolling mills require major investment. So, a huge investment is required for rolling operation. And we got high production rate from the rolling process. Rolling speed is almost 40 meter per second. And the width of rolled product is around 5 meter. And the basic requirement of the rolling material is, if we may, what is the material used for making the rollers? That it should have high strength, it should have high wear resistance. Okay, so for high strength and wear uh, resistance, we can use cast steel, it's a tool material, and a cast iron, and a forged steel, etc. This can be, it has a very good strength and a wear resistance. And if the um, diameter of the roller is very small, then if the diameter of the roller is very small, then there is a chance for this type of deformation or bending of the roller. Okay. To avoid such type of bending, we should use tungsten carbide material for uh, smaller diameter rollers. For large diameter rollers, we can use cast iron, cast steel, uh, forged steel, etc. So, this is the rolled product. Uh, after rolling process, we got this type of rolling strips. Okay. So, this is the roll forming machine. This is actually a very lengthy machine. Uh, we do different types of process along with the rolling. Uh, some type and uh, some uh, preliminary process is required for rolling. This is the diagram showing the uh, commercial rolling mills. And in this, we um, supply the ingots from uh, commonly from uh, casting products. We supply the ingots into this conveyor. And through the conveyor, it is through the approach table, it enter here. We do some descaling, some scales on the surface of the uh, ingots uh, is removed in this stage. Then um, through this arrangement, it arrive on the rolling mills. This is the rolling mills, and then it pass through the rolling rolling mills. And here, then after rolling, we uh, the final product is slab or plate, 
etc so uh, we, will, we will see a video related to that this is the final product after rolling we actually call this uh, sheets after rolling process Final product. This is the rolling process. You can see the material, hot material passing in between the rolling. This is the side view of the rolling process. So this is the rolling process. This is the rolling process. Now let's see this. This is the shipment after rolling. This is the one piece passing through the rolling. a very heavy machinery so when we um, take out the final rolled product so these are the different steps involved in the rolling this, uh, so there, and there is a requirement of preliminary steps before rolling process so this is the reheating for, uh, for furnace heater slab prior to rolling so this is a hot work piece then we do descaling so high pressure water descaler removes the oxide carbon from the steel surface so there will be some slag material or oxide surface material on the um, material on the surface of the uh, workpiece so here we remove all the such type of material the next process is rub milling so there will be a huge reduction here the waste stand with the upstream edge initially rolls the slab to required width there are two rollers in the same housing so we uh, um, in the width direction we do some um, we change the width of the material according to our requirement in the rough milling operation so it is passing through the in between the rollers then again we do so it is a reverse process it is forward and reverse process then intermediate standard this uh, rolling standard has a machine station to check the temperature and other parameters Strip cooling. After this, we cool the product. Different mi uh, steel microstructure is developed by this cooling process. Then edge heater because edge um, reheat the slab edges, which is first cool during the process because the heat conduction in the edge area is higher than that of the central region of the workpiece. So we need to reheat the edges for um, maintaining uniform temperature of the workpiece. This is the crop shear, uh, crops the lead edges of the rough strips to provide clean edges. So we remove the, some of the uh, edges of the workpiece um, for maintain the clean edges of the workpiece. Then we do descaling. This is the descaling again. We do descaling. Then uh, finish straight. This is the here we can see a set of rollers are arranged here. Uh, this type of uh, set of rollers are arranged from large rollers to smaller rollers. Okay. Yeah. this is the um, work piece is initially reduced to uh, one depth then again further reduction and finally we got see this this one so this is actually fi fi finished rolling process then after that uh, there will be some uh, machine, uh, measurements etc post processing stages are there cooling station measuring system etc so this is the industry, rolling industry. So this is the place. Okay, and this is the hot rolling process. So this is the rolling. This is the rolling. This is, this is the macro rolling. This one and this one is macro rolling. These are the rollers. This is passing through the roller. We do different stages. Standard milling is used to pass the reduction. So after that, finally after rolling, we got this type of reel. Find the product. It's a very huge industry. So here is the final sheet material. This is useful for different applications. Okay, so this is the process. 
um, initially we do a continuous casting after continuous casting we got ingot and this is passing uh, in this direction here we do some soaking pit then blooming bill then after that we got a semi finished products the roughing mill uh, this is a semi finished products then after finally uh, after rolling we got the coiled hot rolled steels and there are different types of rolling mills are used for uh, rolling so this is the first one two high roll mills and two high roll mills uh, basically used for hot rolling process initially um, primary roughing and kogi mills and the primary um, reduce the diameter of the cast ingots in the continuous casting process in the previous slide we can see the primary process primary uh, rolling process so here um, we um, we have only two rollers okay so first it we pass in this direction and we do some reduction then we can do the reverse process also for further reduction okay so rotate only in the one direction work piece is only in rotate in the one direction and in the, in two higher reverse mill we can do uh, rolling in the reverse direction also so here we have two high mills uh, two rollers are here so this is a two high rolling mill two high rolling mill let us see a 3d model of a roll mill it's a motor transmission system shaft roller conveyor roller conveyor used to feed the billet through the rolls so see this this is passing through the stand these are the two rollers adjustable top roll top roll which can be adjusted roll. and this is the fixed bottom roll according to the depth we can move this top roll between the two heavy rolls the hot mill and produces thin sheet between the two heavy rolls and it produces thin sheets by this two high uh, roll mill okay two high mill two high next one is three high mill in case of three high mill we have three rollers roller one two three and out of this the roller two is a actually uh, that is a dummy roller okay so upper and lower rollers are power driven while the middle rollers rotate by friction middle roller is rotate by friction so the direction of upper and lower rollers are the same it are here this one this two has same direction this one is in the opposite direction and which is used to produce i beams angles and channels in three high mills reverse milling the direction of the material movement is reversed after first pass so this is the first pass sorry this is the first pass after first pass we reverse the direction of the material in the opposite direction on the next pass okay so here first pass we got this type this much of reduction then we re roll this same uh, semi finished component through this set of rollers and finally we got further reduction this is the final product okay so this is the uh, three high mills and uh, here we use an elevator mechanism let's see the three high mill three high rolling mill let us see a 3d model of a simple conveyor here we can see this is a hot billet this is a three roll mill one two three initially it is Stand. passing between the top roller middle roller top, and bottom roller bottom. so first product for rough rolling uh, the billet is roller. passed between the bottom the and the middle is passed between the bottom and, and the middle thickness. rolls and reduce the thickness then the rough roll build is After again rolled by rolling, passing in between the top is, and middle rolls um, to get the final sheet thickness okay so the conveyor is elevated then the rough rolled product is passed between the top and center roll for further reduction okay then next one is four high mills in case of four high mills we use uh, four rollers out of this this smaller one this are actually the rollers and these two rollers are the backup roller i already explained this um, if you use very small rollers then the requirement of force for the rolling operation is negligible uh, very small compared to the higher diameter rollers so that we here we use a small rollers but when we use smaller rollers what happen the roller may deform or bend like this because of the smaller diameter so that we use a backup roller to support this smaller rollers and this is used for production of slabs and uh, we can make a common roller width is 0.66 uh, meter maximum 1.5 meter and these smaller rollers are the working rollers and uh, two additional higher diameter roller is the backup roller this is called four high mills see this this is a four high mills and this is the four high, high rolling mills. mill let us see a 
Four hundred. A simple backup roll. These are the two backup rollers supporting the working rollers. Working roll. A rolling mill. The billet is deformed in between the two working rollers. The billet is deformed in between two working rollers. The backup roller backup avoids roller the bending of working rollers. Backup roller avoids the bending of working rollers. For the support of the working rollers, we use the backup roller. Four hundred. And another modification of the four hundred mill is the cluster mill. In case of cluster mill, instead of using a single backup roller, here we use number of backup rollers. See this, this is this three, four, five backup rollers are used in one side. This is only the uh, this one is the only working roller. These two are the working rollers. All others are the small um, um, higher diameter backup rollers to support the small diameter working roller. So this is also used for producing thin sheets. Here the force requirement can be reduced to large extent. So see this. See this blue color one is the working rollers. All others are the uh, backup rollers. Another name of this type of cluster milling is the uh, sandmere mill. Another one is the tandem mill. In case of tandem mill, um, we arrange the rollers in series. So see this uh, here. Um, we unwound from the uh, coil. Then this is the first reduction to H1. Then uh, through the other set of rollers, further reduced. Next set of rollers further reduced, another set of rollers further reduced, and then this wound on this reel. Okay, so this um, winding and unwinding actually creates some backup tension on the back tension on the um, material, which uh, reduce the rolling force. And this series of rollers are used for a large reduction of the thickness of the material. Then this this single setup is called a stand. And all the strand combined strand is called a tray, strand and a tray. So we should maintain the constant velocity in between. Uh, here actually, um, different velocity it is working. Uh, the strip will moving at a different velocity. So the speed of the each set of rollers is should be synchronized, so that the input speed of the each strand is equal to the output speed of the proceeding strand. So when it coming out from the particular strand, the speed should be synchronized properly. Then only we got a um, uniform flow of the material through the strands. So for uh, here the material volume is conserved. So the volume is equal to h into uh, velocity into w zero. From this we can uh, calculate the velocity of the each strand, and the equal draft should be also maintained between the strand. So this is the uh, velocity distribution we can see in a tandem mill. And last one is the planetary mill. In case of planetary mill, we have a center backup roller. Around the backup roller, we have a very small diameter. On the periphery of the backup roller, we have a small diameter working rollers. It is like a planetary. So um, when when it rotating, each planetary roller exerts a force on the workpiece. So this is also reduce the uh, force requirement for the roller. Uh, hereby, we are using very small diameter roller, so which will reduce the force requirement. So overall reduction in the Summation of the series of small reduction by each pair of rollers. This is called planetary roll mill. So this is the different types of rolling uh, mills used for rolling operation. And uh, up to this lecture, I am concluding uh, my lecture. Uh, next class, we will discuss or we uh, we are going to analyze the rolling process. How much amount of force is required and what is the uh,